Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Janmad yasya yato niviyad itaratas charte suavigyaswarat Janmad yasya yatam vayar itaratas charte suavigyaswarat Tene brahma hridaya adhika vaye muyanti at surayaha Tene brahma hridaya adhika vaye muyanti jasura Tejo varimadam yata vinimayo yatra trisargum yasha Tejo varimadam yata vinimayo yatra trisargum yasha Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuha kam satyam param dimahi Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuha kam satyam param dimahi O my Lord Shri Krishna Sada Son of Vasudeva. O my Lord Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods but are, are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Water sent of fire, land sent of water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is, in existence in the which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations. In the I meditate world. upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitruvu Cha. Dharma Pujita Kaitruvu Cha. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu. Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapu trayon mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Sadyohridi Avarudhyate Tra. Sadyohridi Avarudhyate Tra. Krite Bihi Sususa Bistakshana. Krite Bihi Sususa Bistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities and material motivations. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truths are roots of threefold miseries. Such truth are roots of threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge, By this culture of knowledge. The, Supreme Lord is established within his heart. the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturo galitam phalam. Nigama kalpaturo galitam phalam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahorasika bhuvibhav kha. Muhur ahorasika bhuvibhav kha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shmar Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna, Shinvatam Swakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani, Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani, Vidu Noti Surit Satam, Vidu Noti Surit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly from the Bhagavad Gita. It's a self righteous activity. It's self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for, and for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who's dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who's dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who's constantly engaged in hearing of him. <coughs> Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Nastiki Bhakti Bhavati Nastiki In this way a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo badayas chaye. Kamalo badayas chaye. Chaitai tar anavidam. Chaitai tar anavidam. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the mode of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manasu. Evam prasanna manasu. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha se jayate. Mukta sangha se jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the signs of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Siyante chasya karmani. Siyante chasya karmani. Drista evatmani swari. Drista evatmani swari. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the heart not of material affection. Thus the Bhakti Yoga serves the heart of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee. Therefore, by hearing only from Krishna from his devotees. In Krishna consciousness, Krishna. can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Verse 26. Patir Rudain Din Rudain and Patir Rudendriya Prana. Patidrindaya Prana. Patir Rudendriya Prana. Prati Rudindriya Prana Mano Buddhim Uparatam Mano Buddhim Uparatam Stana Chayat Param Praptam Stana Chayat Param Praptam Brahma Bhutam Avikriyam Brahma Bhutam Avikriyam Translation The Muni's sense organs, breath, mind, and intelligence were all restrained from material activities. And he was situated in a trance apart from the three, wakefulness, dream, and unconsciousness, having achieved a transcendental position qualitatively equal with the Supreme Absolute. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. It appears that the Muni, in whose hermitage the king entered, was in yogic trance. The transcendental position is attained by three processes, namely the process of jnana, or theoretical knowledge of transcendence, the process of yoga, or factual realization of trance by manipulation of the physiological and psychological functions of the body, and the most approved process of bhakti yoga, or engagement of the senses in the devotional service of the Lord. 
In the Bhagavad Gita also we have the information of the gradual development of perception from matter to a living entity. Our material mind, body, developed from the living entity, the soul. And being influenced by the three qualities of matter, we forget our real identity. The jnana process theoretically speculates about the reality of the soul, but bhakti yoga factually engages the spirit soul in activities. The perception of matter is transcended to still subtler states of the senses. The senses are transcended to the subtler mind and then to the breathing activities and gradually to intelligence. Beyond the intelligence, the living soul is realized by the mechanical activities of the yoga system or practice of meditation restraining the senses, regulating the breathing system and applying intelligence to rise to the transcendental position. This trance stops all material activities of the body. The king saw the muni in that position. He also saw the muni as follows. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. We'll read the next verse also. Vipra Kirna Jata Chanam. Vipra Kirna Jata Chanam. Rora Vena Jine Nacha. Rora Vena Jine Nacha. Vishnu Yatalur Udakam. Vishnu Yatalur Adakam. Tata Bhutam Ayachata. Tata Bhutam Ayachata. The sage in meditation was covered by the skin of a stag and long compressed hair was scattered all over him. The king, whose palate was dry from thirst, asked him for water. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The king, being thirsty, asked the sage for water. That such a great devotee and king asked for water from a sage absorbed in trance was certainly providential. Otherwise, there was no chance of such a unique happening. Maharaj Pariksit was thus placed in an awkward position so that gradually Srimad Bhagavatam could be revealed. Well, when it says providential, it means to referring to the will of Krishna. It's a famous, it was, it's, it's a phase, phrase used in, or a word used in more classical language in English to mean it's to some intervention of God. <clears throat> and that, that's why it says, otherwise there was no chance of such a unique happening because normally the king or preacher would not have been uh, so concerned about his thirst or his hunger or his fatigue and he would have been patient waiting for the sage to come out of his trance out of respect but for some uh, providential reasons uh, Krishna's uh, plan he uh, tried to interrupt the uh, meditation of the sage which would be improper because this was a bona fide sage Okay, so coming back to the purport, uh, this is a Samika Rishi is a bona fide yogi, and he's going through all the steps of uh, the yoga practice for attain for attaining a transcendental state, and this, it's quite complicated. And here. It, uh, Prabhupada explains the transcendental position is, att is attained by three processes, namely the process of jnana or theoretical knowledge of transcendence, the process of yoga or factual realization of trance by, manip by manipulation of the physiological and psychological functions of the earth. So you have to master both the physical functions of the earth, which is what? Eating, sleeping, mating and defending, breathing, evacuating, all those things have to be regulated and controlled. So you might be able to control eating, sleeping, mating and defending, but breathing, you have to actually stop the breathing. 
by swallowing your tongue and closing the anal orifice. And uh, you have to keep the breath trapped in the body. <laughs> That's not an easy thing to do. And uh, so those are the physiological things. Then there's the psychological things. Uh, you have to uh, put the mind at complete rest without it flickering, like a candle in a windless room. It doesn't flicker. So it's, these things are not easy to do. And, but the third process, Prabhupada says, and the most approved process of bhakti yoga, or the engagement of senses in the devotional service of the Lord. So what is the, if, if the goal is the same, so what is the goal? That is to fix the mind completely on Krishna. So one way to do it is to eliminate everything in the mind and stop the, all the physiological and psychological movements and just focus uh, one pointedly on, on Krishna. Or through bhakti yoga, you use everything, including your intelligence and mind, in the service of Krishna. So, there, in other words, there are two ways of uh, attaining, well, there are three ways, it says here, but the, the one was Samitka Rishi, who was a perfect yogi, and the other is Maharaj Parikshit, who's going to become a perfect yogi devotee. So, we see that uh, by listening with full attention to the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is one type of devotional service. There are nine types, right? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. So the first one is hearing. So that's what Maharaj Pariksit is going to do. He's going to hear very attentively and submissively from Sukadev Goswami. And the next one is repeating or chanting. So that's what Sukadev Goswami did. So Sukadev Goswami achieves perfection by chanting and Maharaj Pariksit attains perfection by hearing. It's very interesting uh, to see that through the Bhakti Yoga one can attain the same goal as through yoga or through jnana. In fact, there's a verse like this in the Bhagavad Gita. Let me see where it is. In the third chapter, I think it says, I have to find this verse. Anyway, the verse says that uh, uh, it's a mistake to think that the, the purpose attained through yoga is different, or through Sankhya yoga or some yoga is different than the goal achieved by devotional service. Okay, I'll find that verse later. Okay, so therefore, the uh, that's why in the Bhagavad Gita in the twelfth chapter, it clearly says that the process that is being used by Samika Rishi is troublesome. Um, In, in the beginning of the 12th chapter begins, which are considered to be more perfect, those who are always properly engaged in a devotional service or those who worship the impersonal Brahman, the unmanifested? The Supreme Personality God has said, those who fix their minds on my personal form and are always engaged in worshiping me with great and transcendental faith are considered by me to be most perfect. But those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of senses, the all-pervading, inconceivable, unchanging, fixed, and immovable, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth, 
by controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone such persons engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me. Well, there are such things as bona fide impersonalists who gradually elevate through impersonalism to personalism by realizing the presence of Lord Vishnu in their heart. And then they become a devotee when they understand uh, that Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And they can go even further to go to understand that even Lord Vishnu is an expansion of Krishna. However, it's very rare. And it says here, in order to perceive the super soul within the individual soul, one has to cease the sensual activity, seeing, hearing, tasting, working, etc. Then one comes to understand that the supreme soul is present everywhere. Realizing this, one envies no living entity. He sees no difference between man and animal because he sees soul only, not the outer covering. But for the common man, this method of impersonal realization is very difficult. So that's, that's why it says here that uh, someone would have to uh, uh, as it says, or factual realization of trance by manipulation of the physiological and psychological functions of the earth. Well, that's not easy at all, it's, and it's troublesome, and it takes a long time, and one has to have complete control of the mind and senses, and also one has to eventually have some devotional activity in order to be able to see Vishnu in the heart. It's not simply uh, a complete uh, impersonal process. One will come eventually to see Lord Vishnu if they're not poisoned by Mayavad philosophy. So therefore it says, Klesodikarikasate sam avyakta shakta chaita sam avyakta hi gatir dukam dehadvabir avapyate. For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested impersonal feature of the supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. And then Prabhupada writes in the purport, the group of transcendentalists who follow the path of the inconceivable, unmanifested, impersonal feature of the Supreme Lord are called jnana yogis. And persons who are in full Krishna consciousness engaged in devotional service to the Lord are called bhakti yogis. Now here the difference between jnana yoga and bhakti yoga is definitely expressed. The process of jnana yoga, although ultimately bringing one to the same goal, is very troublesome. Whereas the path of bhakti yoga, the process of being in direct service to the Supreme Personality of God, it is easier and is natural for the embodied soul. So Prabhupada said there's three ways to attain this transcendental position and by three processes. The first one is the process of jnana, or theoretical knowledge of transcendence. That's what's being talked about here in chapter 12. Then it says the process of yoga, that's following Patanjali's yoga system in order to see uh, Lord Vishnu in the heart. Or the theoretical knowledge of transcendence, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, the process of yoga, or factual realization of trance by manipulation of the physiological and psychological functions of the body, and the most approved product, process of bhakti yoga. Okay, so, therefore, uh, Prabhupada continues, he says, uh, whereas the path of bhakti yoga, the process of being in direct service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is easier and is natural for the embodied soul. The individual soul is embodied since time immemorial. It is very difficult for him to simply theoretically understand that he is not the body. Therefore, the bhakti yogi accepts the deity of Krishna as worshipable because there is some bodily conception fixed in the mind which can thus be applied. Of course, worship of the Supreme Personality God in his form within the temple is not idol worship. There is evidence in the Vedic literature that worship may be saguna, saguna and nirguna of the supreme 
possessing or not possessing attributes. Worship of the deity in the temple is saguna worship, for the Lord is represented by material qualities. But the form of the Lord, though represented by material qualities, such as stone, wood, or oil, paint, is not actually material. That is the absolute nature of the Supreme Lord. A crude example may be given here. We may find some mailboxes on the street, and if we post our letters in those mailboxes, they will naturally go to their destination without difficulty. But any old box or an imitation which we may find somewhere, but which is not authorized by the post office, will not do the work. If you put your letter in that box, it won't go anywhere. Similarly, God has an authorized representation in the deity form, which is called Archa Vigraha. This Archa Vigraha is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. God will accept service through that form. The Lord is omnipotent, all-powerful. Therefore, by his incarnation as Archa Vigraha, he can accept the services of the devotee just to make it convenient for the man in conditioned life. So, how does one know if the deity they're worshiping, worshiping is actually Archa Vigraha, an incarnation of, of Krishna? Uh, well, certain things have to happen. First of all, the deity has to be made in, according to the description of Krishna's form in the scriptures. That's point one. Point two, there has to be pran pratista ceremony performed by bona fide brahmanas, chanting bona fide mantras. Pran pratista means inviting the Lord to please come and reside in the deity form, which is made of matter. But if the pran pratista ceremony is correctly done and with love and devotion, then the Lord descends into that uh, deity form and accepts the service of the devotees. So therefore, Prabhupada says, so for a devotee, there's no difficulty in approaching the Supreme immediately and directly. But for those who are following the impersonal way to spiritual realization, the path is difficult. They have to understand the unmanifested representation of the Supreme through such Vedic literatures as the Upanishads. And they have to learn the language, understand the non-perceptual feelings, and realize all these processes. This is not very easy for a common man. A person in Krishna consciousness engaged in devotional service simply by the guidance of the bona fide spiritual master, simply by offering regulative obeisances unto the deity, simply by hearing the glories of the Lord, and simply by eating the remnants of foodstuffs offered to the Lord, realizes the Supreme Personality of Godhead very easily. So this is the point. So after the Pranpatista ceremony is, is conducted, uh, hopefully successfully, now the deity, now that Krishna is residing in the deity, then there has to be regulated devotional service offered to the deity. That is, uh, performing Mangal Arati, waking up the deity first with uh, actually, if you go to the South Indian temples, like uh, Shirangam or or uh, Tirupati uh, or any of the Vishnu temples in South India, there's an elaborate ceremony of waking up the deity in the morning. It's very elaborate. It's called Subrabatam. And uh, it happens uh, usually around 3 o'clock in the morning. And it goes on for uh, about an hour, hour and a half. And... It's very elaborate. It, they begin, uh, well, this is usually a, well, when I went to uh, uh, Sri Rangam, we uh, have been there twice. So the first, the second time, we, I took part in the Subhavatam. So very early in the morning, there is a person who's playing the Veena, and he's singing very beautiful mantras to wake up the deity. Very, very beautiful mantras in, in classical Sanskrit. And then at one point when it's almost ready to have darshan, there's a big elephant that comes in and a beautiful white horse. 
and they're both completely dressed nicely with gold uh, uh, ornaments and 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 the horse is completely white. Every part of it was white. I mean, obviously, it must be a very expensive horse. And the elephant also was very beautiful. And they come in because they're also going to have darshan uh, or give the Lord pleasure by seeing them, these beautiful uh, animals. And everyone is there, and then when they finally open up, it's a grand thing. And the elephant does dandabad. Can you imagine that? He's been trained to give his obeisances, and and the horse also. So it's very grand and very, very ceremonial and very solemn and beautiful. So this this uh, the, the worship of the deity is done uh, in very elaborate way because people are, are convinced that there's no difference between the deity and, and the Lord himself. And uh, there's so many wonderful festivals that go on in these, in these major temples. In Jagannath Puri, they do, uh, I think, 56 offerings of prasadam a day to Lord Jagannath. 56. It's just a uh, just tremendous amount of devotion to do these things. So then it says that... Uh, there's no doubt that the impersonalists are unnecessarily taking a troublesome path with the risk of not realizing the absolute truth at the ultimate end. But the personalist, without any risk, trouble, or difficulty, approaches the Supreme Personality of God, uh, personality directly. A similar passage appears in Srimad Bhagavatam. It is stated there that if one ultimately has to surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, this surrendering process is called bhakti but instead takes the trouble to understand what is Brahman and what is not Brahman and spends his whole life in that way, the result is simply troublesome. Therefore, it is advised here that one should not take up the troublesome path of self-realization because there is uncertainty in the ultimate result. A living entity is eternally an individual soul, and if he wants to merge into the spiritual whole, he may accomplish the realization of the eternal and knowledgeable aspects of his original nature, but the blissful portion is not realized. In other words, you can get sat and chit, but not ananda through the impersonal path. By the grace of some devotee, such a transcendentalist, highly learned in the process of jnana yoga, may come to the point of bhakti yoga or devotional service at that time the long practice in impersonalism also becomes a source of trouble because he cannot give up the idea. Therefore, an embodied soul is always in difficulty with the unmanifest, but at the time of practice and at the time of realization, uh, both at the time of practice and at the time of realization, every living soul is partially independent, and one should know for certain that this unmanifested realization is against the nature of his spiritual blissful self. One should not take up this process. For every individual living entity, the process of Krishna consciousness, which entails full engagement in devotional service, is the best way. If one wants to ignore this devotional service, there is the danger of turning to atheism. Thus, the process of centering attention on the unmanifested the inconceivable, which is beyond the approach of the senses, is already expressed in this verse and should never be encouraged at any time, especially in this age. It is not advised by Lord Krishna. So there in the 12th chapter, Lord Krishna definitely does not advise trying to uh, attain this transcendental state through uh, jnana or even mystic yoga. But definitely he recommends bhakti yoga. So... This is explained uh, very, very nicely also, uh, where one time a friend of mine, a god brother of mine uh, named Guru Gurangadas, he wrote a letter to Prabhupada and uh, asked him a question. Because he was cultivating this impersonalist. Actually, I, I met that impersonalist first and uh, introduced him, or put the idea in his mind that he should meet Prabhupada. So when Prabhupada came to Geneva, uh, Guru Garanga 
contacted him also because he was also in Geneva. His name was uh, Jean Herbert. He was a French translator of Aurobindo, and he himself was some kind of a of a guru. And he wrote a book, uh, uh, the Yoga d'Amour, the, the Yoga of of Love, and uh, it's all about uh, Bhakti Yoga. So when he met Srila Prabhupada, he gave him a copy of his book, and he said, I, I spent uh, more than 10 years writing this book. And Prabhupada, without even touching the book or looking at it, looked at him in the eye and said, and still there are many mistakes. <laughs> so he was like, you know, inflated like this when he handed the book to Prabhupada, and when Prabhupada said that, he deflated down completely. <laughs> and Prabhupada like put him down really hard, but you know, not by, not by using harsh language, but you know, and he was right because that book was all full of speculation, and he had gotten most of his knowledge. He told Prabhupada he had gone to Vrindavan at least ten or twelve times, and spoken to the uh, some of the uh, the uh, caste Goswamis in Radha Raman temple and, uh, and, and others. So he did a lot of research, but uh, his conclusions were mostly uh, speculative and wrong. So Prabhupada uh, later on wrote to uh, Guru Garanga, uh, and wh wh whose his question was, if I'm n not f uh, wrong, was, you know, how, how do you, uh, convince these people that, uh, you know, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that uh, you cannot approach him through speculation. So Prabhupada said, uh, first of all, he said, yet karosi yadasnasi yajido johosi dadasi yat tapasya sikonte tat kurusva madarpanam. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. So one should engage in this process of surrender through devotional service. And Prabhupada says, if a person follows this injunction, this verse, with love, offers the Lord everything he has, wife, house, family, intelligence, learning, business, religiosity, labor, food, water, whatever is required to maintain the body and even lust, greed, and anger, then the Lord accepts these offerings and completely satisfies the offerer. And at the time of death, the Lord takes such a surrendered soul to his supreme abode. So, uh, then he also quoted another verse, Bahunam janmanamante gyanavamam papadyante vasudeva saramiti samahatma sudurlabaha. Well, that verse, uh, the seventh chapter, 19th verse, basically says that one who engages bahunam janmanamante in jnana, janmanam or jnanam ante, uh, basically, uh, you know, it's, it, as you just explained in the 12th chapter, when we just read it, it's a troublesome path. And it's not sure that you'll reach the actual goal. But if, if you do, after all that trouble, right, what do you understand? Vasudeva Savamiti, Krishna, you are everything for me. And therefore, I surrender completely to you. So why, why not take the direct way through bhakti yoga? Why, why go through that arduous, hard process and without certainty of, of attaining perfection? Very few people will attain perfection in that way anyway because it says, Samahatma Sudurlabaha, such, such great personalities who come to this conclusion through jnana are very rare, right? And then Prabhupada quoted another verse, 1866, Krishna basically tells Arjuna, look, uh, give up all these other paths and just surrender unto me. And if you do this, I promise you, you'll be free of all karmic reactions and I will protect you. Therefore, there's no reason to hesitate. There's no reason to doubt. There's no reason to be uh, 
to uh, uh, be fearful. So abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. And then after that, Prabhupada quoted another verse. And yoginam apisarve samad gatanantanat brahma shadamam bhajate yomam same yuktamomatak, the sixth chapter, last verse, where Krishna says, well, of, amongst all yogis, my opinion is, that the bhakti yogi is the best. And of all yogis, the one with great faith who abides in me, thinks of me within himself and renders transcendental loving service to me. He is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. So how to talk or how to convince people? Well, it's gotta be based on Shastric evidence. And here Prabhupada gave four verses of Shastric evidence that the bhakti yoga is the goal of all yoga and the, the, and the most direct way and easiest way to connect to Krishna eternally. Because bhakti yoga is the means and the end, both. It's the way to get there and it's what you do when you get there. Right. So this was a nice letter that Prabhupada wrote to my friend and devotee, uh, God brother, and it put an end to any doubt in one's mind, or at least in my mind, in my, my God brother's mind, that bhakti yoga should be the only concern uh, for devotees. And if you, we get to the point of offering even a leaf, water, fruit, or flower with love to Krishna, he accepts. And that means, that's the perfection of yoga. If he accepts our offering, that means yukta, Vairagya, we're connected to him through renunciation of very all nonsense and acceptance of direct, uh, let's say, connection to the Lord through the parampara, through Guru and the parampara. Hare Krishna. So we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Haribo. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.